1976, a band emerged out of New York with a very refined synthesis of Latin rock and jazz rock. I am talking about Caldera and from their self-titled debut album, the track Exaltation. Those first opening notes, I almost think that I'm, I'm hearing like the start of like a cold wave number. Kind of an icy, dreamy sound. Sparkly bits. Already really buoyant. I, I love the, the bass line, the rhythmic figure that took that, that took shape almost immediately. Yeah, really upbeat major key. The bass is so fluid. Really smooth, really persistent, really fast, really just making everything kind of brim. Hear the way that that keyboard and like the vocals just kind of interacted there on those notes. Those <laughs> quite a few different keyboard sounds I got going. Got that like a Fender. Got some synthesizer. almost has kind of like a wah-wah kind of effect to it going like wah, 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 wah. interesting how it seems like like vocals um horns and um the keyboard are, are like interacting are, are like doing that part in unison that I'm hearing like like at least two well at least two of them are doing it simultaneously. Do -do -do, like. It's worth knowing that this is produced by Wayne Henderson, yeah, one of the leading uh, producers of this time period. So a good tonal uh, clarity between the instruments and such. A lot of, you can follow a lot of different things just at your own free will. Okay, that clavinet. Going into some real staccato groove section here. that sound shivery God, this is tight Hard to get. like it, it's in four four, but it, it it's it's almost like confusing where the the figure begins. It's Hear that like metal that keeps that's like rattling persistently. I like the way that the uh, woodwinds are just kind of working their way down and weaving around. That's 
uh, get to know some of the people that we're hearing here. Um, on bass, we got Raul de Souza, who um, from Brazil, who did some solo albums during the mid seventies. Um, we have got um, on soprano, saxophone, and flute Steve Tavaglione, who um, oh, has one hundred and eighty eight credits according to Scoggs. Most of them post-dating Caldera, but he would appear as a backing player on a lot of people's... Oh, appeared on the 1983 Finnis Henderson album. Yeah, West Coast classic. Yeah, Finnis Henderson had been in Weapons of Peace. Yeah, that put out an album the same year as this Caldera album. Um, and let's see... Uh, oh, vocals, we got... Oh, Carolyn Davis. Oh, yeah, her. Yeah, she... Um, and, uh, yeah, she was on a, a Bread and Love and Dreams album. And, um, yeah, I did a video on them a few weeks ago. And, uh, get, uh, introduce more as we go along. <laughs> Guitar uh, George Struns, who would ultimately go on to this duo, Struns and Farah, and um, appear on some albums by L. Subramanian, uh, Indian violinist, the brother of Shankar. bass we're hearing here is Dean Cortez. He would uh, later join Hi Hiroshima. And that uh, persistent like like the arp that we're hearing right here and um, that's really coloring this section. That is by Eduardo Del Barrio, who plays acoustic piano, electric piano, synthesizer, clavinet, and percussion on the album. Yeah, and he um, has almost 300 credits on this Gogs. He, um, in addition to Caldera, would play on All in All by Earth, Wind, and Fire the following year, um, and Ramsey Lewis's Tequila Mockingbird, and uh, yeah, play on albums by Herb Alpert. Struns and Farah. Yeah. I love that sound. I love the way it's wheezing. Way it almost the way that the, the tones almost kind of bend in a way. See, there's a slight vibrato in each of the notes. Even even you can tell even as as the notes are being played fast. Uh, bringing together some unique different elements that you don't often hear. It's like um, I, I, I don't often hear um, like Latin influenced jazz rock with this much tonal color in the keyboards like drawn it seems kind of from some of the more kind of edgier territory of like jazz funk and even um, I, I even heard, heard heard a few keyboard sounds like early on the piece that I'm more used to hearing like on electronic albums. Yeah, um, yeah the keyboard, definitely um, Eduardo is bringing some, some, some real unique elements in the, in, into this whole framework. <laughs> This is 
like a really creative like group of guys that would allow I, I, I swear not every Latin jazz rock ensemble would have allowed a solo like that on the record let alone allowed it to uh, allow it to take up so much length within the song <laughs> Okay, I don't know if for, for certain if that's an ARP. I think it is, but whatever it is, it's kind of... Um, I've never really made a list of my favorite ARP solos, but... Um... <laughs> The way that I, I just love the vibrato quality in those notes, it almost vaguely kind of is starting to remind, is having me think now of the solo in um, Just the Same by Gentle Giant, where those notes get all kind of vibrato y, like. <laughs> Different tone, of course. This is a lot higher, but... That basis has just been so smooth, so fresh this whole time, so fluid. I love how the, the voice and the keyboard double up. Yeah, the, the, the way they, they just kind of meld together. A lot of vocal skill on display there. But not overpowering you, just kind of self-evident, just, you know. Uh, those little tingly bits. Sustain chords, you know, giving kind of that, that climactic effect. Uh, laying on the mist. Yeah. Exaltation by Caldera from their self titled 1976 debut album. Yeah, Mine of Talent. Who else do we have playing on this album? Drums by Carlos Vega. Uh, 418 credits, according to Scoggs. Um, it was on a 1980 album by Miguel Bose. That, that's the Spanish pop vocalist. Yeah, that guy, I know him. Yeah, kind of a, kind of a goofball from what little I've seen on YouTube. Um, oh, he was on uh, recordings by the Hughes Corporation, um, Freddie Hubbard. And as uh, oh, he would uh, later appear on um, an album by Lisa Dal Bello and George Benson's Give Me the Night and Peter Allen's by Costa. This guy's done, um, oh, uh, Terry Desario. Yeah, this guy's all, all over the map pop, MOR, uh, city pop. He's on an album by Hiromi Awasaki. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. John O'Banion's 1981 album. Oh, and Jim Photoglow. And Olivia's Physical. Yeah, he plays on Silvery Rain and, and a bunch of other tracks. Wow, this, this guy gets around. Um, oh, Lee Rittenauer's Rit 2. Oh, yeah, that's got some great stuff on it. Yeah, that's the one with, uh, yeah, Dream Walking, Promises, Promises. Yeah, with um, Eric Tag on vocals. Um... 
Let's see, percussion by Roberto da Silva. Yeah, definitely a familiar name. Uh, would play on uh, an album by Milton uh, Nascimento. Um, was the 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 year before this Caldera album was on an album by was on the Identity album by Erto Morir Mor. Uh, a name I know very well, but have not really pronounced out loud. I don't want to murder it. Um, yeah, I remember um, about ten years ago I um, was in this class with uh, this student from Brazil, and uh, she wrote this term paper on the Brazilian music scene in the seventies and no, the sixties, and I was one of the in this group of people selected to peer, where we were peer reviewing each other's articles. And um, I, I was quite versed in the Brazilian music scene of the 60s and especially the 70s at that point. But it was only when trying to talk to her that I realized how intimidating it could be uh, to have that kind of discussion to someone who can speak Portuguese because I just suddenly realized, wait a minute, I know all these names on paper, but I've never said any of them out loud before because I've never actually had a, an in-person conversation about any of this music. It's like, wait a minute, I can't, I, I better not say the name, I might murder it. It'd be really embarrassing to, you know, to be um, mispronouncing all these names in front of a, someone who, who speaks Portuguese. Yeah. Um, and so it's, so I, I was just like, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, that was Caldera with, um, Exaltation from an album that has a really colorful cover. It's basically, um, South America and Africa colliding, or the outlines of them anyway, colliding where they used to connect when they when when all the continents were part of Pangaea and um except they're filled in with representations of their flora and of their native flora and fauna yeah for more rubies and sapphires from the Caldera catalog, see the directory of albums by American jazz funk artists link, linked in the description below for Red Hot Tracks and Tasty Purples from this album and the two that followed it, as well as many other uh, like-minded uh, Latin rock, jazz funk albums and artists from the 70s and early 80s. Like, like and subscribe and follow me on social media and leave a comment if there are observations you have about the track we just heard. The layers, the arrangements, the nuances, the soloing, the interlocking, uh, counterpoint, yeah, who had the best moment, the best break on the album. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled Tramaximalist, signing off.